Revelations chapter number 11. Revelations chapter number 11. And uh, we'll be finishing up this chapter here tonight by the Lord's grace. And um, I hope that our faith is growing stronger in the Lord. And from these verses of scripture that we've been studying, that we see the urgency to tell others about Jesus. To tell others about the soon coming King. Hopefully you found your place there, Revelations chapter number 11. Let's begin the reading in verse number 14. Verse number 14 there. And if you found your place, will you stand with us? The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his, of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God, uh, sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, which was, and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants and to, and, and to thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroyed the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Father, how thankful we are again that we can stand here before you today and give thanks unto you. Lord, we can exalt your holy name. Lord, for saving our souls. Lord, for calling us, equipping us, and blessing us. How thankful we are for your word. And Lord, it is our heart's desire that we would hide your word in our hearts. Lord, we don't want to sin against you. We don't want that sweet fellowship to be separated. Lord, we don't want to walk in darkness. We want to walk in the light with you. And I'm asking of you here now, Lord, that all of our hearts are ready, ready and prepared to receive the word of God. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit of God would enlighten it. And God, open up our understanding to what thus saith the Lord. Bless us now, I pray, with the unction, O oh God, that we need, that only comes from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Beloved, again, I remind us of this, that the book of Revelation is about the unveiling of Jesus Christ. It is about us understanding more of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to reveal himself to the church. God, here's the wonderful thing. God wants us to know him, Brother Brian. Isn't that amazing thing? I find that fascinating. Turn with me in John chapter 17, the gospel of John chapter 17. The Gospel of John chapter 17, God wants us to know him. Verse number one, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy son, and thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Oh, yes, that's what Jesus does for him. He gives eternal life. Now, verse number three, here it is. And this life eternal, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I know in the day that we live in, that a lot of people like to say there's many different gods. There's only one God, amen? There's only one God, there's only one Lord, there's only one Spirit. There's only one God, and he is Jehovah, amen? He is the God of the Bible. He is the God that does not exist within man's understanding, 
And man's time frame, he's eternal, he's holy, he is God. And we need to understand from the revealed truth who God is. So that's why he's given to us this blessed book, amen. That's why he's given to us as well, the church, the book of Revelation, so we can know Jesus more, we can know God. Hallelujah for that church. I'm so thankful that Jesus even said over in John chapter 5 and verse number 39, he said, search the scriptures for in them think ye what? Have eternal life and they are they. What? The scriptures, they are they which testify of me. So if you want to know more about Jesus Christ, you're not going to find it in any other book outside of this book. Amen. Hey, you'll find all that you need to know about Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, Messiah, soon coming King, Redeemer, Deliverer, Healer. You're going to find it all in these pages here we call the Bible. Amen. We're going to find it all about him now. We've been studying though. I've been saying this here. We've been studying and hopefully learning about the lordship of Jesus Christ. Every wrath, every judgment that's being poured out now during the tribulation period is coming directly from Christ Jesus. He is the one that God has ordained, given a name above all names, right? Not only to save, but also to punish. Jesus Christ is declaring all of this. And now we We've been studying. We've been going through the tribulation period here. It is seven years. We're in the last three and a half years of the tribulation, which is called the great tribulation. It's a time of suffering. Why? Why is mankind being judged by God? Why is man being uh, going through such an awful suffering time now? Well, Galatians tells us this here. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 7, For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you reap what? Corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you reap life everlasting. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for that. Amen. So in essence, what it is, the choice is yours. You can choose to sow to the flesh as many people are. And they're, what they're saying is more or less to say, I don't want God. When somebody lives in this flesh, this old nature here, and says, I don't want God, God's going to give you that. Amen. You're going to reap what you sow. Where if you're saved or lost here, you're going to reap what you sow. Beloved, I don't know about you, but I love this thing of reaping and sowing. Say, preacher, you, you lost your rocker. No. If I sow in the spirit, y'all know that's just one little seed. And when you plant that little seed there, what happens? You get an abundance in return. That's what God does, amen. I, I hope that encourages you there because why sometimes we feel like we might not be doing enough there, but God's just saying, hey, do that one thing that I want you to do and God blesses with an abundance there. I love it because why? That old ear of corn, right, is a prime example. All it takes is one kernel. Amen. And boy, I don't know about y'all, but I like those old ears of corn. Y'all like corn? I like it as well. And boy, you get an abundance of kernels on one ear, don't you? Amen. That's what I'm saying. Now, the choice, as this world is making a choice to reject God, and so in this flesh, they're going to reap corruption, and we're seeing this corruption that they're reaping right here and right now is a great judgment of God being poured out upon them. So, let's look here again, and what we're seeing in verse number 14. Verse number 14 in the text now is teaching us about the woes. Remember in Revelation chapter 8, in Revelation chapter 8, verse number 13, the Bible introduced us into three woes. Now two have already passed. We're about to get into the third one. That's coming up in Revelation chapter number 12, I believe it is. Now, the third one's going to come to pass. Now, that word woe, it just simply means, hey, there's grief and sorrow and suffering that's going to come to pass. That's coming to pass there. And we've seen that, church, have we not? We've seen much suffering. So here we are in verse number 15. In the verse number 15, the Bible is teaching us about the angel now. He has sounded the trumpet, right? The seventh angel sounded in a great voice in heaven. There, was, there came a great voice in heaven saying, the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. So the seventh trumpet now has sounded. This is the last 
trumpet. Remember, there's only seven of them. So this is the last trumpet, the last angel that's sounding here the trump of God. Here we see now that it's sounding this trumpet and we're learning now this trumpet is a future events. It's sounding the trumpet and proclaiming of things that's going to happen. That's going to happen in the future here. This is a glorious sound now. This is a trumpet that's telling us of things that's going to happen in the future. And when the trumpet is sound, there's a glorious, a holy proclamation that goes throughout out all of heaven. What is it? He said all the kingdoms now have underneath the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Now, we know that that's not right now. Amen, it's not. We know that that's not what he's talking about of, of now, but we know this as well. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to stay, stay the course, stay the course. Hey, this is the kingdom though, all right? All kingdoms will become as Christ. He's proclaiming things that's going to happen in the future. What is he talking about? He's talking about the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will call his bride to come home. That's the rapture. The tribulation period is going to take place. The seven years is going to go through. Once the seven years have gone through there, then Christ comes down to rule and reign for a thousand years. All kingdoms then, all kings then will bow down to Jesus Christ. Now, beloved, can you picture this right here? And I want you to get a hold of this, okay? When Jesus is on earth, everything's going to be done right. Nothing's going to be done wrong. There's not going to be any injustice. There's not going to be unfair treatment there. There's not going to be an evil law that's put out in place. Everything's going to be right. But man's, man's soul, man's nature is still going to be there. Keep this in mind now, okay? Man's nature is still going to be there. That old Adamic nature is going to be there while Christ, the perfect one, is ruling and reigning. All kingdoms are going to bow down to him. This is talking about his millennial reign. He's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. We'll come to that in Revelation chapter 20. But it also talks about him reigning forever. That is the future there when he makes all things new and he sits on New Jerusalem there and he's the light of the world. Jesus. Jesus is going to reign. Hallelujah. Beloved, I know he rules and he reigns right now. He is in control. But there's going to be a day when mankind is going to see him one more time with their eyes and he's going to rule and reign on the throne of David with a rod of iron. Once that thousand years is done away with, God's going to make all things new and Jesus is still going to reign. Amen. Hallelujah. He's still going to reign. I hope he's reigning in your heart tonight. Amen. We see this now in what he's talking about in this proclamation all through heaven. The seventh trumpet has sounded and this, this proclamation, this eruption of praise here starts to begin as well because we'll see that in verse number 16. After this, this, uh, this, this proclamation, after this announcement has made in verse number 16, what happens? The four and 20 elders, the 24 elders, right? The 12, uh, the 12 representation of the tribes of Israel and the 12 representation of the apostles there. So that's 24 that's sitting on their seats now. They hear this come. They hear this come from heaven and they respond. Beloved, that's what it's all about. Listen now, please hear me well. When we hear from heaven, amen, when we hear from God, we, it's our responsibility to respond to what God has given Notice what they did now. They just didn't sit there. They just didn't soak it up. They didn't sour away. But hallelujah, they stood up and they had a shouting spell. Amen. Hey, the Bible tells us what they did. There was this great announcement took place. And boy, they fell down there, the Bible tells us. They were happy in essence. They were happy to hear this come from heaven. Beloved, if you live for Jesus Christ, amen, and you know the truth, and when you hear God say it, it does something on the inside of your soul. There we see these, right, these individuals, right? The 12 representations of the tribe of Israel and the 12 apostles there, right? They're sitting in their seats right there around the throne. In essence, you know what this is telling us here? They earned their positions. 
God just didn't say, okay, hey, I'm going to give this to you willy-nilly. No, they were people of faith. They earned these positions at the throne of Christ, heard about Jesus Christ, and now they said, hey, boys, we're not sitting down here anymore. we got to respond to this, and that's exactly what it is. Worship breaks out when they hear about what? The lordship of Jesus Christ. Why that becomes a problem in people, I don't understand. If Christ Jesus has saved your soul, you should have no problem saying he is my Lord. Amen. Amen. I have no problem him saying you do whatever you want to do in my life because why? My soul's in your hand anyway. Amen. Here we see this. So the, what do they do? They break out in a worship spell. I, beloved, I, I hope one day, I hope one day that we all have such a time of praise and worshiping God just like they have. I hope we have that before the trumpet sounds. And I mean that with all my heart. I know I have it. I know I have it because why? Here the Bible says they got up. You know, when you get happy, what do you do? You get up. <laughs> I believe they were happy. Boy, there was a joy that filled their soul when they heard about Jesus Christ and they just couldn't help it. They had to get up there, but now they didn't stay standing up for long, did they? They fell down on their face. As the Bible says in verse number 16, they fell down their face before God. They humbled themselves. When we worship God, when you praise God, it ain't about you. Amen. It ain't about me. It's about Christ Jesus. And we humble ourselves before him, giving thanks unto the one that is in control of it all. Now, they also said what was on their heart. Amen, beloved. I'm encouraging you this here tonight. When God gets a hold of you, you need to say what he's laid on your heart. You need to do it now. You need to do it. And we're seeing this right here unfold before our very eyes in the word of God. I know how it is many times. This old flesh now, this old nature here, it wants to beat you up. It wants to drag you down. And it wants to, especially even sitting in church now, this old nature come against you. Oh, I, God's seen what you've done. You know what you've done. You don't need to stand up. You don't need to praise. You don't need to brag on Jesus right there. You're not worthy of it, beloved. On your best days, we're not worthy the owner. On our lowest days, we're not worthy of it, but he's still worthy no matter what day you're having. Amen. We're seeing now. They proclaim. What did they say? I love this now. They broke out in a boy a wonderful time. Verse number 17, see what the saints of God. These are leaders of faith. These are people that live by faith. Notice what the saints of God said in their time of worship. And I believe we ought to follow their example. Notice in verse number 17. We give thee thanks. Amen. I know beyond a shadow of doubt, <laughs> beloved, God has blessed you. I know he has. You got to say amen. You don't have to say praise the Lord. I know he has. You need to realize he has. And when you realize that he's blessed you, you will give thanks unto him. I believe that's another reason why when people set before them food, they don't realize that that's a blessing from God. They don't give thanks for their food. Amen. When they have their time of going to take rest, they're going to rest at nighttime. I don't know about y'all, but boy, I give thanks for a good night's rest. And I know I can't give myself a good night's rest, but I know one that can. Amen. Oh, I'm just saying, the Bible says they, they gave thanks unto the Lord. Now, did they give thanks in their heart unto the Lord? No, the Bible says they said it. Amen. Now, what's on your heart? It's going to come out of your mouth. Amen. Here we see this. What did they say? They said the name of Lord God Almighty. Say, preacher, why is that important? There's name, there's power. Power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's power in the name of the Lord. He's not the man upstairs. Amen. He's not the good, that, that uh, was the man upstairs there. I heard people make this statement as well, that he's the, the big guy. You know, he's the big guy, the one that's in control. Nope, it's not the big guy. He's not that, you know, he's that, you know, the one I'm talking about. No, it's not that one. He's got a name. Amen. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is God, Jehovah, Lord. And he says he's almighty. What is he saying there? He says he's speaking about his attribute, his might there. Is there anything too hard for God, church? No. And it goes on as well. Talks about his attributes. He was what? Which art was and art to come. What is he talking about there? He is eternal. Beloved, what is this talking about? And how we ought to praise God for this. Every day that we live, God knows what we're going to go through. Why? He's already been there. 
Amen. He knows the past. Matter of fact, he's in the past. This is who God is. He's in the past. He dwells in the past. He stays in the past. He's in the future. Amen. That's where he's at. He dwells in the future. But also our God is in the present. Praise God. Nothing gets past him. Praise the Lord. And we can praise him no matter what kind of day you're having. No matter what comes your way there. He already knows all about it. And he has prepared this day for you. This is the day that the Lord hath made. How are you going to rejoice and be glad in it? You know he made it. Amen. You know that he is the one that is in control. Speaking of his attributes, beloved, when we praise God, we ought to say his name. When we praise the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to say his name. We ought to speak of his might and his power and his attributes and the personality of who he is. Rag on God. But then notice as well, they spoke about his great power. Now notice the phrase that they said here, and I like this in the Word of God and the way it's uh, phrased now. They said, has taken to thee thy great power. So, now it kind of sounds like he's lost it, but God doesn't lose his power. What he's saying here is that God showed his power and might. See, beloved, we have it right now. You have power and might within you. But we don't show it. You don't need to show it. You don't need to take hold of your power until it's time to show it. If I could break it down this way, it made me think about this right here. I've got three boys. All of them are same. They are. They got the same nature about them. They will test the waters. Say, you don't know what I'm talking about, preacher? Well, hold tight. Okay. All right. But what I'm telling you now, my oldest done it. Wyatt's doing it right now. And what they're doing, they're going to see how much stronger they are than daddy. Now, see, I can play around with them. I can do a little roughhousing with them. But they'll carry it to another degree. And what do I have to do? I have to take hold of my power and let them know, oh, no, you're not as strong as daddy, at least not right now. <laughs> this is God and what he's saying here now. Now, there's none stronger than God. But there are times when, God's, when people are thinking, you know what? God's not powerful. He's not doing anything. But when he takes action, hallelujah, and his great power is displayed to you and I, that's when we throw up our hands and say, hallelujah, thank you, God, for doing this, whatever it may be that you have done in my life because it was done by your power. Amen, Amen church. He's praising him, exalting him, and glorifying God. We see this. Now, hey, they're giving thanks now of who God is, but of the things to come. As we said, this is a trumpet about the future. They're giving thanks about the things to come. Not the things that they have already, God has already done, but the things to come. And beloved, can I say this here? The things that are coming forth, the things that are come there, they are permanently set in motion. Ecclesiastes chapter number 4, 13, I want to read this right here. The things that God has done, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, in verse number 14, and whatever God does, it is forever. That's what he says here. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. God doeth it that men shall fear before him. This is it. God's will, his plan has been set in motion. Nothing's going to stop God's word. Nothing's going to stop his will. There are plans that's been put in motion right here and we're going to see some things that hasn't come to pass, but they will come to pass. And this is what they're praising God about. Beloved, can I can say this right here as well. I'm just going to get to it. We'll get to it. I promise you now. We need to praise the Lord for what he's going to do. Amen. Now, we don't tell him what to do. Amen. You can't tell God that he's going to do this in your life, but you can praise him for what he's going to do that you know he's going to do in your life. Amen. There's some things that we ought to be claiming according to the word of God. Hallelujah to that. Now, verse number 18, we see this here. What are they praising him for? The things that's going to happen in the future. What is it? Verse number 18. It is of the judgment. It is of the, the rewards. And it's of destruction. Verse number 18. You see that there? It said the nations are angry of wrath to come. And it said the time of the dead. And they should be what? Judged. There is a judgment that is coming. 
It is the judgment seat of Christ. We find out over there, it's not, I'm sorry, not judgment seat of Christ. This is talking about judgment here. It is the great white throne of judgment. That's over there in Revelation chapter number 20 and verse number 11, where it talks about the dead shall stand before Christ, the great, the small shall stand before him. And he said, the books are open, the book of life is open, and every man was judged according to their worst. This is that judgment to come where death is going to deliver up those that die without Jesus Christ that hell's going to deliver up those that died without Jesus Christ. They're going to stand before him at the great white throne of judgment there and they are going to be the ones that's angry at God, hates God, despises God and God's going to give them exactly what they want. It's a life without him. That final judgment now, you sow in the flesh, God's going to give you what you want. You don't want Jesus, God will give you exactly what you want. This is what we're seeing here. As a matter of fact, it says the nations will be angry at him. Now, I told you to keep in mind the millennial reign that's going to come. The nature of man is still going to be there. Brother Brown, I believe people are going to get saved. But I still believe that there's going to be those that's going to follow the old man, the old Adamic nature there, and they're going to be angry at Jesus. Why? Because he's doing right. They were angry at Jesus Christ when he lived on earth. They were angry at him for doing all these wonderful... Matter of fact, you even read, read over there in Luke chapter 19. We won't do that now. In Luke chapter 19, verse number 15, Jesus gives the parable about the, about the king that goes away and he goes and he lends out the vineyard, right? And he said, hey, I know what I'll do. I'll send my servants. They'll listen to my servants. They, killed, they didn't listen to the service. He said, finally, I'll send what? My son. Now, what they said, they said, hey, we're not going to have this man reign over us. So after the millennial reign, what takes place? Those that hate God, those that are angry with God, they're going to rise up with the devil one more time there, and Jesus is going to take care of them. Now, the final judgment is going to take place. And the final judgment, they'll all stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne of judgment. Their names not found written in the book of life. They're cast into the lake of fire and they're going to burn forever and ever and ever. We're going to get to that, okay? But this is what they're talking about. The judgment now, look here, beloved. Please hear tight. Hold tight now. The reward, the reward for who? Thy servants. This is thy servants are going to be rewarded. The, what? the prophets there and the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great. Beloved, whether we like to admit it or not, there's some people that almost everybody knows in Christianity, right? There's some people that nobody knows about, right? But God does. You get hold of that now. It ain't about us getting our name out there, no. It's about the God of glory taking perfect record, and he does, of our life. The Bible says it's that reward. That reward is the same terminology of wages, okay? Now, y'all know this. I know you know this right here. You go to work. You work your eight hours, your 10 hours, your 12 hours. You get paid X amount of dollars per hour. At the end of the week, what do you get? Paycheck, right? There's a paycheck that's coming for every believer. And here's the, I'm talking about this, man, this excites me. Why? Because we're saved, amen. We're not going to go to hell. We're not going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. We're going to spend eternity in heaven, a new body. And then Jesus said, I'm going to give you a little bit more. What? Church, I don't know about y'all, but man, this is an amazing thing, all right? They said, I'm going to reward you more because of your service to me. Matter of fact, the apostle Peter said this, and I'm sure to read this with me here in Luke chapter 18. Will y'all turn with me there now? This is talking about you that are saved tonight. If you're saved, there's a day that's coming that Christ is going to reward us. He's going to give us the wages of our service unto him. Why do we do what we do? It's not for man's record. It's for God's record. Why do we do what we do? Because he saved us, amen. We are his workmanship created unto good works. Notice what he said here in Luke chapter 18, verse number 28. Peter said, Lo, we've left all and followed thee. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there's no man that left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold, multiple, multiple, right? More than this present, present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. Jesus said this right here. You can't outgive me. You, your life that I've saved, 
is in perfect record. I'm keeping perfect record of what you're doing. Now the Bible tells us whatsoever we do, we're to do heartily unto the Lord, right? Whatever we do, we're to do it with all of our heart unto him, not half-heartedly. Now, beloved, you may have been better at your walk with God than I have, but I'm just being honest with you. There's been times in my life my heart wasn't in it, but I was doing it. I'm just telling you now, but God, he keeps record of our motive of what we do for him. And why we do it, we do it out of love. We do it because why? It's the least thing that we can do. We can serve him now. We're serving God and he's keeping record. Peter said we left it all. Jesus says, no man that left your house behind. Many missionaries left house behind. They left properties behind. For what? The kingdom's sake. They left parents, left family, left brethren. Sometimes living for Jesus. They might be next door to you, but you still got to leave them. Now, that's a hard pill to swallow. Because why? Beloved, I, I remember when I first, walk, when first started walking with the Lord. And boy, I, my dad, he wasn't, you know, yeah, Jason, you keep on doing that right there. He wasn't all for it and everything. Matter of fact, I've even told y'all the story when I told him, I said, Daddy, I'm leaving Marm. I can come in here. He said, boy, I don't know if that's a good decision or not. This is what I'm saying now. And I love him. I honor him there. The Bible says now, you love God first. And he says, if you leave them, don't worry about it. I'm taking record. I'll bless you now. And if, hey, if what I've given you right now is not enough, I'll give you even more in glory, if I could put it that way. Amen? And this is what Jesus is saying. There's a reward. Beloved, we should fear the Lord with all our heart. And we should love the Lord with all our heart. I believe that our heart ought to be rightly divided with those two things, love and fear. When it's overtaken with love right there, we'll all get into that. We'll get into to a, to a laxadaisius. We'll get into a, a, a really a careless lifestyle. If it's all of fear right there, we'll be, we'll be overtaken right there with such, such trembling in our souls that we'll be so timid to do anything. It's got to be a balance. We fear God. We love God. It can't be just, you know, just one side of this right here. Because why? We fear Him. We should fear Him now. Having a fear of Him that we will disappoint Him. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You ever have somebody in your life that you looked up to and you know, you had to come to them and tell them, I'm sorry, I did not fulfill your desires. I didn't do it your way and I apologize. And you looked up to this person. You had to give them that bad news that you failed them. This is that fear that we should be having toward Jesus Christ. That we fail him. And brothers and sisters, guys, I know some of you already say, well, preacher, I fail him every day. That's not what we're talking about there. It's a lifestyle that we have given up and we're no longer living for him. We're not even trying. That should fear, that fear should grip hold of us and that love for him to do his will and obey his word. Now, I'm moving, I promise you. The last one on this right here is destruction, which speaks about over there in Revelation chapter number 11, what's to come. Destruction of the earth. This earth's going to be done away with. The heavens that we know is going to be done away with. There's going to be a new earth and a new heaven. Christ is going to make all things new. Now notice in verse number 19 as we wrap this up here tonight. We need to. It says the temple of God was opened in heaven after the trumpet sounded. And now you've got the four and twenty elders. They're praising God and worshiping God. The things that's going to come to pass here, we see before us in a good reminder of what's going to happen. Now God opens up heaven. He opens up heaven there and what is seen? is seen in the temple of God, the ark of his testament here. He said there was lightnings and voices and thunders and earthquake and great hail. Beloved, we see here that Christ Jesus is being exalted. He's being praised. He's being lifted up. What does God do in response? Opens up heaven. I hope we get this now. Please get this tonight. When he's lifted up, when Christ is preeminent there, beloved, we need the showers of blessings that come from God. We need the windows of heaven to be open. We need God to allow us to enter into his presence. And it's only going to happen when we do what? We lift up the Lord. We lift up the Lord God Almighty. Now, the Bible tells us here, the Ark of the Testament is being revealed in the temple. That's the Ark of God's covenant. What is that saying? It, the Ark, there's so many symbolism there, but if you can put it this way, the Ark in heaven, it represents the faithfulness of God. What is in the Ark? 
the word of God. Forever thy word is settled in heaven. What else is in there? We have as well Aaron's rod. God is faithful to his people. Hallelujah. What else is in there? That pot of manna. God is faithful in providing for his people. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house as many mansions. Amen. He said, I've gone to what? Prepare a place for you. Our God is a faithful God. And he opens up the windows of heaven and he shows one more time his faithfulness to you and I. Beloved, we need him, amen. We need God to show himself one more time. The lightnings and the thunderings there. What does that remind you of? I hope this reminds you of as well. Remember when Moses went up on Mount Sinai there? And the Bible tells us what happened. It said the earth shook. The mountain itself shook. There was lightnings there. There was thunderings. There was great fire and, 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 and the voice of God and the presence of God. And this is what he's saying now. That when heaven is open, the presence of God will be given as well. Beloved, we need God. We need his presence. Now, I'll leave you with this here. What's your future look like? This trumpet, the last one, the seventh trumpet, is foretelling about things that's going to happen in the future. What does your future look like? Not on earth, but for eternity. Beloved, you know the life that you're living. I said it before and I'll say it again probably till I die. You are who you are in the dark. And that's who God is recording. That person that you are when nobody else sees and what you do. Are you prepared for the future? Say, preacher, I'm saved. Hallelujah for that. Some of you might be saying, preacher, I'm not saved. If you need to be saved, you can be saved tonight. Is simply believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ and trusting him with all your heart. But if you're saved tonight, are you prepared to stand before the Lord God Almighty? Are you prepared by the life that you're living, the things that you're doing, child of God? I know we're not perfect. I know that. But we don't settle for that. We aim for the mark. We shoot for the prize, Right? Have you lost that desire? Have you lost that fear inside of your heart that you're going to stand before the one that saved your soul? Have you lost that love? Boy, remember that zealous love that you used to have? Well, whatever God wanted you to do, whatever the church needed, you were that man, you were that woman, whatever Jesus wanted you to do, it was no problem. You didn't have to pray about it. You said, yes, Lord. Amen. Are you ready? Are you prepared? The trumpet's going to sound. What are you sowing in? Are you sowing in the flesh or sowing in the spirit? The trumpet's about the sound. Are you prepared? Are you packed up? Jesus Christ, hallelujah, he is coming. Are you right now, just like Peter, saying, Lord, we left it all. God, everything is up for disposal. Everything in my life is up for whatever you want. My houses, my land, my cars, my body, whatever is yours. I'm at your disposal, Lord. I'm willing to give it all up for you. Can you say that tonight? Can you say that tonight? Jesus says, though you forsake it all, don't worry about it. I'm keeping perfect record. There's a day of reckoning. A day of wages is going to be given to you. Can you say, I'm a servant of the Lord. Father in Jesus' name, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you so much for reminding me of how serious this thing is and my relationship with you. God of heaven, may I have no reserves. May I have no hesitation. Be willing to give it all up, Lord, to do your will. Father, there may be some here tonight, they have gotten wearied and well-doing. Lord, they may have forgotten about the day, the day standing before you, Lord Jesus, give an account. Lord, of the talents that you've given to them, the possessions that you've given to them, the body that you've given to them. And Lord, may have gotten wearied and wanted to stop, 
take it easy and coast on. My God of heaven, you've called us with a higher calling. Help us all here tonight to be servants of the Most High King. Lord, if there's one that needs to be saved, may they call on Jesus. Lord, may your people spend time with you tonight and pray. Lord, that fear they need, the love they need, whatever it may be, they'll get it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you stand to your feet, please.